Hi friends! From our bedroom window at night, we can hear frogs croaking. I don't know exactly where they are, maybe along the bike path or maybe at Mount Parnassus, but it sounds like they're close enough to be at the Buxton Inn, <laughs> maybe in the fountain in the courtyard. Did you know that there are over 5,000 known species of frogs? They come in a wide variety of sizes and colors, and they live in different habitats in every continent except Antarctica. Have you ever heard of the water-holding frog? This frog lives only in southern Australia, and it has the unique ability to, you guessed it, hold water. <laughs> the frog lives underground for years at a time. Rain wakes it up. Water dripping into the underground chamber is the alarm clock that lets the frog know that it's time to surface, to feed, and to breed. Above the ground, this frog spends most of its time swimming in temporary pools, feeding on insects and tadpoles and smaller frogs. They catch their swimming prey with their hands and then stuff it into their mouths. They also prey on ants and termites in the dry land. They mate during this time as well, and when the males sing out in chorus, it sounds like a motorcycle starting up. The water-holding frog needs to get back underground before the ground gets too hard to burrow through. When that time comes, the frog will burrow backwards into the mud, using its hind legs like spades. Once underground, it secretes a mucus from the skin, which lines the chamber and hardens around the frog's body, creating a translucent, waterproof cocoon around itself. This helps to preserve water for the many long months and years ahead. The frog's metabolic rate also slows and it enters a kind of suspended animation, kind of like hibernation. It will have to live off its fat reserves and water stored in its bladder until the next rainy season comes. Aborigines use these frogs as a water source. The frogs store water in their bladder and in pockets in their skin, and slight pressure applied to the frog will cause the frog to release the water. The Aboriginal people dug up the water-holding frog, and after enjoying the refreshing water, <laughs> released the frog unharmed. I was thinking that, like these frogs that store up water to sustain them during dry periods, we can fill ourselves with the living water of Jesus so that when we hit a dry spell, like a disappointment, a failure, a tragedy, a loss, or any experience that drains us, we will already have what we need to make it through. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapters 4 and 7, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. Those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. I don't know about you, but I'd rather embrace Jesus than squeeze a frog for sustenance and support. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again soon.